July 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Nehemiah chapter 7 from the Old Testament. When the wall had been rebuilt and I had positioned the doors and the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed, I then put in charge over Jerusalem my brother, Hanani and Hananiah, the chief of the citadel, for he was a faithful man and feared God more than many do. I said to them, The gates of Jerusalem must not be opened in the early morning, until those who are standing guard close the doors and lock them. Position residents of Jerusalem as guards, some at their guard stations and some near their homes. Now the city was spread out and large, and there were not a lot of people in it. At that time, houses had not been rebuilt. My God placed it on my heart to gather the leaders, the officials, and the ordinary people so they could be enrolled on the basis of genealogy. I found the genealogical records of those who had formally returned. Here is what I found written in that record. These are the people of the province who returned from the captivity of the exiles, whom King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had forced into exile. They returned to Jerusalem and to Judah, each to his own city. They came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Rehemiah, Nehemiah, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mizpareth, Bigvi, Nehem, and Baana. The number of Israelite men was as follows. The defendants of Parosh, 2,172. The descendants of Shephatiah, 372. The descendants of Era, 652. The descendants of Pehath Moab, from the line of Jeshua and Joab, 2,818. The descendants of Elam, 1,254. The descendants of Zatu, 845. The descendants of Zakai, 760. The descendants of Binuai, 648. The descendants of Bebai, 628. The descendants of Asgad, 2,322. The descendants of Adonikam, 667. The descendants of Bigvi, 2,067. The descendants of Aden, 655. The descendants of Ater, through Hezekiah, 98. The descendants of Hashem, 328. The descendants of Bezai, 324. The descendants of Hareph, 112. The descendants of Gibeon, 95. The men of Bethlehem and Netopha, 188. The men of Anathoth, 128. The men of the family of Asmaveth, 42. The men of Kiriath Jerem, Kepharah, and Beeroth, 743. The men of Ramah and Geba, 621. The men of Michmash, 122. The men of Bethel and A, 123. The men of the other Nebo, 52. The descendants of the other Elam, 1,254. The descendants of Haram, 320. The descendants of Jericho, 345. The descendants of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721. The descendants of Sinea, 3,930. The priests, the descendants of Judea, through the family of Jeshua, 973. The descendants of Immer, 1,052. The descendants of Pasher, 1,247. The descendants of Haram, 1,017. The Levites, the descendants of Jeshua, through Cadmiel, through the line of Hodaviah, 74. The singers, the descendants of Asaph, 148. The gatekeepers, the descendants of Shalom, the descendants of Ater, the descendants of Talman, the descendants of Akab, 
the descendants of Hatita, and the descendants of Shobai, the temple servants, the descendants of Ziha, the descendants of Hasufa, the descendants of Tabioth, the descendants of Keros, the descendants of Saya, the descendants of Padan, the descendants of Lebanon, the descendants of Hagabah, the descendants of Shalmai, the descendants of Hanan, the descendants of Giddel, the descendants of Gehar, the descendants of Rieya, the descendants of Reason, the descendants of Nakoda, the descendants of Gazam, the descendants of Uzza, the descendants of Pasea, the descendants of Besai, the descendants of Mayanum, the descendants of Nessusum, the descendants of Bakbuk, the descendants of Hakufa, the descendants of Harher, the descendants of Basleth, the descendants of Mahida, the descendants of Harsha, the descendants of Barkos, the descendants of Sisera, the descendants of Tima, the descendants of Neziah, the descendants of Hatipha, the descendants of the servants of Solomon, the descendants of Sotai, the descendants of Sophereth, the descendants of Peraida, the descendants of Jaela, the descendants of Darkon, the descendants of Giddel, the descendants of Shephatiah, the descendants of Hattil, the descendants of Pokereth Hazabim, and the descendants of Ammon. All the temple servants and the descendants of the servants of Solomon, 392. These are the ones who came up from Telmila, Telharsha, Kirub, Adon, and Immer, although they were unable to certify their family connection or their ancestry as to whether they were really from Israel. The descendants of Deleah, the descendants of Tobiah, the descendants of Nakoda, 642. And from among the priests, the descendants of Hobeah, the descendants of Hakaz, and the descendants of Barzilliah, who had married a woman from the daughters of Barzilliah, the Gileadite, and was called by that name. They searched for their records in the genealogical materials, but none were found. They were therefore excluded from the priesthood. The governor instructed them not to eat any of the sacred food until there was a priest who could consult the Urim and Thummim. The entire group numbered 42,360, not counting their 7,337 male and female servants. They also had 245 male and female singers. They had 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. Some of the family leaders contributed to the work. The governor contributed to the treasury 1,000 gold drachmas, 50 bowls, and 530 priestly garments. Some of the family leaders gave to the project treasury 20,000 gold drachmas and 2,200 silver minas. What the rest of the people gave amounted to 20,000 gold drachmas, 2,000 silver minas, and 67 priestly garments. The priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, some of the people, the temple servants, and all the rest of Israel lived in their cities. When the seventh month arrived and the Israelites were settled in their cities, God, it's um, interesting to me because this list is very similar to the one I just read in Ezra. However, it does differ a little bit, uh, especially in the numbers. And people always like to go, oh, it's not the same. And there's a problem in the Bible. And you and I know that that's not what happened. That uh, there's a good chance that this was just an updated list. That in that short amount of time, these are the, this includes the people who had been born and the people who had died in those particular communities. And I think it is very important for us not to miss the comparison of these two list. You intentionally put these two lists that look very similar in the Bible, pretty close to each other. Um, and we know that they reference each other in our current Bibles. Uh, I know that that's done by man, not, not necessarily by you. Um, 
But everything you do in the Bible is intentional. And so we've got to look at that and, and realize that there is a lot of differences between that first list and the supposed matching second list. And we've got to look at why that is. So going back and looking at the births and the deaths within that community, um, some of them are more births, some of them are more deaths that happen depending upon which family that they were involved with. But I think what we should recognize as Christians today is those exact same type of lists are happening today, that there's people who are dying, um, who may be very sick, who today might be the last day on earth, even if they're healthy. Um, they may be called to not be here anymore. And we have a very short amount of time to get to tell them about you to share the joy of you, the grace, the mercy, your amazing forgiveness, to tell them this great story that somewhere along the line somebody has told us, probably more than one person has told us. So this urgency that there's people changing this list every single day because they're no longer here. So that sense of urgency, I think, needs to become apparent to us. And then the other side, the people being born into this world, all these new people coming, um, who have never heard about you or the gospel story about your son, about what he did for us on the cross, the amazing, unselfish, loving beyond our understanding uh, act that he did on the cross, taking on all our sins. Um, all these new people are coming into the world every single day, changing that list who we need to get out and tell. And then we have everybody in between as well. Uh, so, Although there's many reasons why we have this list for historical documentation, um, for who this remnant is that came back, um, all sorts of information theologians have, have garnered from this. But one of the things that we can act on today is that understanding that that list changes constantly. Who is around us and who suddenly is not around us changes constantly. Sometimes they're close family members. Um, that we need to be intentional about telling that story to. Sometimes they're friends, sometimes they're people who we've never met. Um, I can't thank you enough, God, for that incredible miracle of allowing me to pray with my mom. Like, that was amazing. I, I'm not sure in a million years I would have believed that that was going to happen, but, but you changed her heart, and in that moment, um, she said yes to letting me pray with her and uh, talking to her about your love talking to her about your grace, talking to her about your sovereignty, uh, your forgiveness, all of those things. Like there was that wonderful window that you opened up. Um, gosh, it was just such a blessing to do that. I don't know if that window's going to open again. Uh, that's kind of up to you. But I, I did have that window of opportunity to share with her. Uh, and now I know that whatever you need that to do on her heart, that you'll work on that with her. Gosh, that was just so amazing. But again, that's something I don't know how much longer my mom is actually going to be here. Um, so taking that moment. And then we have all these incredible new people coming into the world. People having babies, young children. And the effect of not seeing them as cumbersome or loud or annoying. But realizing that some of those first stories, those first Bible stories that get into their hearts are what really sticks with them. Um, throughout their uh, move from their parents' religion and their parents' beliefs into their own beliefs as well. And so, I, God, I just ask that you help us remember to invest in time in those kids that are out there. They're so incredibly important. Then, of course, you know, our opportunities with everybody in between, whether it's people we know or people we, we meet that we had no idea we were going to get a chance to, to have that window with. God, I just thank you for all these opportunities. I don't know why in the world you trust us to tell people about you. Um, I'm such a control freak that I think I would just come down and do it myself. But here you've empowered us uh, to be walking testimonies of your gloriousness. And through all of my weaknesses and my mistakes and my disasters and my choices of sin, somehow in all of that, you are glorified. You are sovereign. You are sovereign over everything. God, I can't thank you enough for allowing us to have such an incredibly important job here on earth. The honor and the blessing of getting to tell other people about you. 
And you know the highlight of my day is just getting to talk to other people about you. God, I just ask that you open up the hearts of everyone listening right now. That they will not take on that fear that many people do about what will that person think if I ask to pray with them or what will that person think if I start talking to them about God. But just knowing that you've moved that path open already and we are simply called to obey whatever it is that you've asked us to do in that moment. God, thank you for giving us such an important opportunity every single day to talk about you. I do request and pray for the strength to do that for everyone listening. In your son's name we pray. Amen.